Welcome. Today we are going to explore the elastic energy experiment. Specifically, our goal is going to be to look at the data collection and do a tutorial on how to take the data. You might find this in the Patterns Physics Unit 3, Energy and Engineering. In class, this will be around using our system analysis and specifically, we want to know the distance stretched and to find a mathematical model to convert elastic energy into a stretch. Before this, hopefully you've done some work with energy bar charts, finding the mathematical model for gravitational energy, and possibly finding the spring constant or the strength of your spring. Now, what do we want to do? We want to research how does the stretch of a spring affect the elastic energy stored in it? And that's really hard to do um, by going to actually do a bungee jump. So we're going to create an analogous situation. Instead of going bungee jumping from a high height and down, down below, we're going to look at this with a mass at the top that falls down to an ending height and look at the distance stretched in between. Before doing this experiment, you should code the data table, which helps you analyze the data. That data table looks like this, and hopefully you were able to watch the video or code yourself using the system analysis diagram. Now, I want to show you how to take data and analyze that data. So let's go look at a, at a video and a picture of what you're going to do. Ultimately, we want to get distance stretched and elastic energy. But to do that, we're going to change the mass and look at the ending height of this. The experimental setup looks like this. You're going to have a cord, a bungee cord, or a spring to represent the bungee cord and the bungee jump. The prefer preferred way of doing this is to tie paper clips on either end of the bungee cord and use uh, different amounts of strands for each group. One group might have a single strand which isn't shown, another group might have a double strand, and another group yet will have a triple strand. That just changes how strong those rubber bands are and then that allows us to compare later. For our experimental setup it's going to look like this where we're going to drop a mass from the starting height at the top, which is at one meter, and we're going to let it fall down, and we're going to find the lowest point that it gets to. When you're doing this, you want to set up your meter stick so that the one meter mark is at the top and zero meters is at the bottom. When you drop the mass, it looks like my string here is really tight, but it's not. It is just at the spot where it's not uh, tight or not loose. It's just about to get stretched. And my mass is at the top of the, the meter stick up here. When you video record this, rather than by eye, you, you want to find the lowest point that it gets to. It's not going to be the point where it um, levels out off. It wants to, you want to get the lowest point because that's what we're looking for in a bungee jump. To show this with two different masses, we've set it up here. This is 100, kilogram, or 100 grams, or 0.1 kilograms, and on this side is 200 grams, or 0.2 kilograms. And you can see in the video that we're going to look for the ending height at the bottom. Now it's really hard to see this by eye, so what I would recommend doing is recording it and scrubbing back and forth here to find the lowest point you can see the ending height was 0.82 meters or 82 centimeters. On this side, we're going to do something similar. Drop it from the top and find the, the bottom. And if, if we can find the bottom here, it ends at 47 centimeters or 0.47 meters. This kind of makes sense that less mass is not going to stretch it as far because it has less gravitational energy to begin. And the more mass is going to stretch it further. Let's go ahead and enter our data into the data table. 
100 grams is point zero, 0 0.1 kilograms, and it's going to round it for me automatically. It's very important that you enter this in kilograms. Our next one was 200 grams, or 0 0.200 kilograms, excuse me, and that will round that in. Our starting height was one meter for each, and my ending height was 0 0.82 and 0 0.47. This ultimately gives me my distance stretched and my elastic energy on this side. You will do a starting height of one meter for each of these as you're going. Now it's very important for you to uh, graph your data and that would, will happen next. The next thing you should do is get your data graphed. On the x-axis you're going to graph distance stretched. On the y-axis you'll graph elastic energy. There's three common mistakes that people make before graphing. The first is making sure that your mass is indeed in kilograms. The second is that you have a starting height of one meter. And the third is that your ending height is in meters, not in centimeters. After this video, again, you should take your data and then go ahead and graph in Desmos.